This video has been compiled to help you with the servicing of ITS heat pumps. Servicing is of utmost importance to ensure the longevity and optimal efficiencies of the unit is sustained. Failure to service the heat pump will drastically reduce the lifespan of the unit and have an adverse effect on its performance. After your annual service has been completed, it is vital for you to upload reports. A report section on our website has been created for your convenience. Things that we need on the report is parameters, photographs and a few other bits and pieces. The warranty of the heat pump will be voided if the heat pump is not serviced annually and services can only be conducted by ITS approved dealers. An ITS hands-on servicing course will also be conducted every two to three months. We shall keep you up to date with regards to dates. If you would like more information on how to service ITS heat pumps and how to log on to the website, please email info at itssolar.co.za. Okay, now that we have to remove the front cover of the machine, we can remove the fan blade to give us more access to the machine itself. And then once we've got the full access to the machine, it's imperative that we, on the first service, that we remove the compressor jacket. Now that we have finished uh, with the front of the machine, removing the fan blade, removing the compressor jacket, we're moving to the back of the machine, the evaporator. The product that we're going to be using to clean the evaporator, first of all, we're looking at the blue chem degreasing soap. This is for all machines that are coastal that have received the blue, blue chem anti-corrosive treatment. This is the only product that you use on those machines that have the, the coating received to keep the coating in its original condition. For standard machines, we're looking at the ITS degreasing soap. It's the cheapest option, and but it is just as effective as the blue chem soap. In preparation to clean the evaporator, we first need to remove all the debris. As you can see from this machine, it is quite full of pine leaves, cobwebs, uh, sand leaves, just grit all over. And the only effective way to remove this first is with a small brush. A fine brush bristle like this one can be used, but now to get to the evaporator, we first need to remove the back cover and then the evaporator protective layer. of the evaporator and all the debris is off, we can start move over to the descaling of the heat exchanger. The product that we use for the descaling is the ITS descaling liquid. Now the main base of this product is hydrochloric acid with some extra components on within it to protect the metal and rubbers of the machine. So it's imperative that safety equipment is used while using the acid. First of all for the safety equipment to be used is a pair of clear safety glasses, clear proper rubber gloves, and an apron. The product that we're going to use to circulate the liquid through the heat exchanger is going to be a descaling bucket. Now this can be made from an old uh, feeder tank from a low pressure solar system, like this one, or you can use a, a normal bucket. And all you need to do is have is two flex hoses with an exit point to, into the heat exchanger and a return point with fittings for the unit itself. Now that I have all my safety gear on, apron, glass, glasses, we can start uh, preparing the system. First off is the bucket itself connected to the in and outlet port and then I've got my acid, my descaling acid ready as well as two liters of water. Now that my bucket has been connected, what we all need to do is two liters of water that goes first into the bucket. Always water first. And then we follow with 200 milliliters of the acid. Please take special care at this point so with the acid not bouncing back into your hands or skin or anything. If you do get in contact with your skin with the acid, soak water immediately and rinse and rinse thoroughly to get everything off. 
now that my asset solution is ready to start circulating, we can use the existing circulation pump within the machine to circulate through the heat exchanger. All we need to do is, with our LCD display, use the existing parameters to isolate the components that we want to use, in this case, the circulation pump. With parameter one, up arrow twice, we set it down from 53 down to 10 degrees Celsius. Then we go up further to parameter number nine, and we adjust it from one to zero. This will isolate the circulating pump so that only the circulating pump is circulating at this point. Right, now that we've descaled the system for 20 minutes, we can remove the descaling water and acid mixture from the bucket. We're just decanting into another empty bucket. Now we need to neutralize the acid linings that's in the heat exchanger. It's two liters of steam water, some standard diesel with dishwashing liquid can be added and recirculate for another five minutes to neutralize. Right, now that the system has been neutralized from the acid water and soap has run through, everything is fine, we can remove the bucket with the soap water completely from the system after which we rinse it with clear water just to get the soap out of the heat exchanger. During the descaling process, it's just very important to remember that under no circumstances must the circulation pump be able to run dry. Also remember to, in between cycles of dumping water and putting new water into the system, to switch the uh, system off via the controller. After everything has been completed, remember also your settings, parameter 1 that was adjusted back down to 10, to take that back up to 53 as per the manual and also parameter 9 from 0 back to 1. Now that the scanning is done we need to degrease the entire system. As you can see this system is quite uh, uh, dirty. Um, but we need to protect our electrical components as well as the circulation pump from the water spray. The best way to do that is just to take an old piece of rag and we drape the electrical tray Make sure that all the pieces are in the side. And then a normal plastic bag that we can wrap around the tray as well. This is basically this for plastic to keep the water out. If any water that's uh, an overspray does get into the tray, the cloth is there to absorb the water spray in the system. As you can see, the circulation pop electronic part is also exposed. So once again, normal little plastic bag. Get it in there, wrap it around the actual component there as much as you can just to prevent water overspray from reaching the electronics. For preparation of the degreaser, take a 10 15 litre bucket, lukewarm water and 1 to 10 ratio, approximately 2 cups, of the actual degreasing soap. Pour it into the water. Let's give it a quick stir and you're ready to soak the evaporator. Okay, this is the most effective way is just to get the degreasing soap onto the evaporator. Just take the bucket, start from the top, and just like pour it down. That's the easiest way. Start from the left, work your way around to the opposite corner. All the excess soap will run into the base, so your base is already flooded with the soap as well. Leave it for about five minutes for the soap to do its job and you're ready for the high pressure uh, uh, spray. With the high pressure hose, it's just very important to hand with 10 centimeters and a millimeters width away from the evaporator fins. Never go sideways, always top to bottom. finished with the degreasing of the machine, now we can return to the electrical tray where we can physically remove the cloth that we inserted as well as the plastic bag. Once you've removed everything, please inspect the entire tray for any moisture that might have gotten into the tray, especially the PC board. Now that we've done with the descaling and the entire degreasing of the machine, 
we need to go back now to the piece of again. This is the last item that you need to do for the machines to complete your first service. And that is the introduction of a glass fiber sheet to the electronical tray. Now the reason why we put the fiber sheet in is for all plastic casing machines to reduce airflow over the PC board electronics and reduce the rodents infestations as well as bugs that can possibly get into it. With the airflow traveling freely over the PC boards in high salt areas, coastal areas like for example Durban and so forth, we can have premature failure of the PC board due to salt on the boards. The fiber sheet itself reduces the airflow over the boards, preventing any salt deposits on the board. To install the fiber sheet, just first look at the actual sizing of the sheet so that the correct sizing can go in. You want to cover as much space into the board as possible, all the space. Start at the back, inserting the the sheet all the way to the bottom, following over to the top and inserting the front to the front slot. Once it's pushed down to the bottom, slightly press down onto the top, squeeze in the ends and you're done. Right guys, now that we've done with the machine, serviced, descaled, everything, and we've put in the protective sheet, we need to do a visual inspection to make sure that everything is still intact. Do especially a visual inspection to the cast lines on the back of the machine closest to the uh, circulation pump to make sure that this has not moved out of position. If the gas line looked at the bottom to be rather close to the circulation pump, piece of, take a piece of uh, foam insulation and just shove it in between rather than try to readjust or move the gas line itself. This will prevent vibration against one another. After everything has been completed, take the fan blade back onto the fan shaft itself, but remember it with a nut to lock it off before closure of the entire unit. And that's it. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today on the ITS Heat Pump Service Training. We trust you found it a great help. Any further information or questions, please feel free to phone us on 021-854-5290 email us at info at itsola.co.za. Lastly, just to reiterate, servicing of e-pumps can only be done by ITS accredited service agents. We look forward to seeing you on the next service training course.